Mohamed Amina, the UN's top ranking female official, described the current laws on women's education and workplace as an aberration to the teaching of Islam, but highlighted the need to engage with the Taliban. There has been some progress. Some exemptions have been made to the edicts that have covered the health sector. I think that's because the international community, and particularly the partners who are funding this, were able to show the implications and the impact of the woman-to-woman -woman services, particularly childbirth. Cautioning remains to be achieved. The Deputy Secretary General, therefore, held talks with senior Taliban officials in Afghanistan and made headway on women's rights. The 61-year-old UN diplomat said her delegation met with the cabinet members, including the foreign minister, deputy prime minister, and minister of refugees and returnees. The high-level meeting earlier this week comes amid widespread criticism of Taliban for banning women from universities and NGOs last month. Millions of high school girls have already been confined to their homes as schools remain shut. I was always very clear that I am going there as an opportunity to air the voices of Afghanistan, as an opportunity to air the voices of Afghan women. We heard from young women who said, we do not need your voice. What we need is you amplify ours. The group also met the governor of Kandahar, as well as the Shura, who is the leadership council, that is responsible for taking many key decisions in the country. And according to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the humanitarian crises in the country were affecting 28 million people.